Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 17th to the 23rd, 2024 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. And if you're interested in a private reading, check out my website, daneheartguidedmessages.com. It's listed in the description box below. You can also buy gift cards there if you're interested. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. All right, Gemini. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides oh okay so we have the ten of pentacles reversed <laughs> we have the ten of wands we have the six of cups we have the seven of wands reversed and the page of pentacles reversed we have the page of cups reversed the empress reversed interesting the ace of cups reversed the Five of Swords reversed, the Queen of Wands, and the Knight of Swords reversed. Okay, so we're represented by the Swords in the Minor Arcana. We have the Knight of Swords reversed here, which means that this can be a week where we we are rather reckless. Just being aware of that, we kind of want things to move forward, and it's like, I'm just going to make it all happen. But we're we're dealing with a sense of inadequacy, so we're going to come to it from the sense of, I'm cursed, I'm never going to get to where I want to be, I'm never going to move forward the way that I want to, everything is a disaster type of thing. So I just wanted to check and make sure that we're in frame, because of course I just <laughs> dove right into the reading, spirit is talking so loud right now. So just be mindful about this during this time. Like we can have these really high highs, these really low lows, and just feel like all over the place. And that's because we, like this 10 of wands, makes me think of Joan of Arc, right? You know, the being kind of like burnt at the stake thing. But it's a sense of, I am feeling so overwhelmed and overburdened. And if we don't address that, it's going to just engulf us. It is, it's going to engulf us. So stepping back and saying, you know what? The demands, the burdens, the, the, the overload, right? The, disregard for self that is going on here it's not okay and that's where we're going to have to start because you my friend are most likely a very sensitive person i would venture to guess that since you found this cha channel since you're here you are a highly sensitive person you are a person who fits into this world quite differently than others more introverted i mean you could be an extroverted person people might not know that inwardly you are introverted that you need time to like recharge you might not even know because we're sold this bag of goods like this lovely bag of beans that says okay you have to be just like this and then you'll be successful right you have to be extroverted you have to be in the middle of everything you can't miss out on anything look everybody's having more fun than you and with social media it's only been amplified here's the thing it's not true you need to live exactly as you are meaning 
in alignment with your inner soul and your inner love and your inner self. As long as you come from a place of kindness, of love and compassion, go with it. Embrace it. See yourself shine and let yourself shine. That's going to be a really, really, really important thing here. Because with the Ten of Pentacles reverse, this is prosperity. This is success. This is generational wealth. But with it reversed, it is a sense of, I don't get to be prosperous. I don't get to be wealthy. You know, the, the sins of the father carried onto the son, you know, type of thing. My family, my people, they never get to be anything more than repressed and overwhelmed and overburdened and overlooked and denied. And you are breaking those chains. You are. You are breaking those chains. It's like, mm -mm, no, not me. No, I'm not living in that knowledge, in that truth. It is not mine. I release it. I release it. So this week, you can find yourself in this place where it's like, you know, you can feel overburdened with financial issues or money, what you value as much as money. And this is going to be a time where you have a breakthrough. If you don't overburden yourself, if you don't make so many demands onto yourself that it's just like you're drowning. And you might be saying, you know, Dane, that's great. But, you know, I have work, I have kids, I have, you know, school, I have, a, you know, all these different things. I have partners. Like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Right. I have pets. I have everything that needs me. And it's making sure that you make time, even 15 minutes a day, to say that I matter. I matter and I'm showing up for me. And it brings us then to the Seven of Cups. Because the Seven of Cups is this inner child energy. And the Seven of Cups, not the Seven of Cups, the Six of Cups is this inner child energy. And it is remembering the beautiful moments where you felt the happiest. And I would really, you know, Spirit is really showing me that they're not the moments where the most money was spent. It is the moments where you felt safe, where you felt happy, where you felt seen. And that is the beauty that you're bringing forward during this time. And that you need to bring forward within yourself because we have the seven of ones here. Like we're done with the fighting. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so done with this. I can't take this energy anymore. It's draining me. It's overwhelming me. And it brings us to the page of pentacles. It is also what's keeping us from being prosperous because the energy of always having to fight, always having to be on guard, always having to see ourselves in a certain light, it, it makes us overlook our inner child of success, of planting the seeds, of embracing our curiosity, which is the main part of a Gemini. I mean, it's the thing that people love about Geminis and the thing that people absolutely hate about us. They're like, they're so curious. They never stop talking. They're flighty as all heck. You know, they, they get bored so quickly. You know, people even say like, oh, Geminis don't make good partners. No, if your Gemini is interested in you, a Gemini makes the most fantastic partner. It is when they find you boring that they're out of there. So just be mindful about that. Like a Gemini is a textbook person with ADHD, right? So just being aware, even if like you don't have ADHD, just, you know, exaggerating. Here with the page of pentacles, planting your desires, planting your wishes, giving yourself time, not biting off more than you can chew, demanding so much of yourself. It moves us to the page of cups because when you do that, you're not listening to your inner self of love and compassion and, and, and beauty. It's like, it's stifling the heart and your heart needs to create. So here also is the inner child of love, of fun, of like, you know, of beauty. And with it reversed, it's like, oh no, we, we don't have time for this, but we need to make time for it. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> <coughs> it moves us then to the empress. The empress reverse is, is an overbearing nature, right? It's an overbearing I need to take care of. Now we can feel like I need to take care of everything. I see this as like the overbearing mother, right? Trope that, that we have. But it's like, I need everything to be so perfect that everything will be so safe, that everything will go well. And it comes from the place of deepest love. But uh, we can be doing this to ourselves, right? I just want to take care of you so well and it to be so perfect that I don't want you to get hurt, right? Our psyche can be doing this to us. So let's not start anything new. Let's not go after our dreams because we tried that already. We got hurt. So now we're going to play it safe. This is stepping into creativity. This is stepping into, you know, compassion and love, but bringing beauty forward. And it brings us then to the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups, we're taking the gift with the Page of Cups, but we're not realizing yet because both of these are reversed. The Ace of Cups is healing beautiful love. And 
I know it sounds silly to say we're not ready to take a gift of healing, beautiful love, but we're not quite ready yet. We're a bit overwhelmed. We can feel a bit all over the place. And we know that if we accept this gift, it's going to change our world. We know that if we accept this gift, that it can also bring up a lot of fears and a lot of tears that we're like, you know what? I really have enough on my plate right now. I don't need to deal with this. So just be mindful about pushing off love that you have dreamt of since you were little because of fear. And it's not saying that this is right or this is wrong, you know, to do. It is, it is human. And it doesn't have to be romantic love. It can be the love of, of friendship, the love of companionship. It could be, you know, oh my gosh, I, I had a, a dog or a bird or a cat when I was little and I loved them so much and I lost them and I will never, ever do that to myself again. That's the love here that we're healing from. The love that we loved so deep and it hurt us. And it moves us into the five of swords because we're thinking, you know, I remember when that hurt real bad. And I'm the same person, right? I'm the same person I was. That pain comes through as the five-year-old child pain. It comes through as, you know, the 15-year-old pain. It comes through as whatever age we were when we experienced that pain. And we think we're the same person. And here's the kicker. We're not. We have come through so much and we're actually changing. We're changing our generational line, right? We're changing our generational trauma. We're healing ourselves in such a way that we're not holding it up and saying, but see, this is why. We're looking at it and saying, wow, you know, that held true for so long and it's not true anymore. And that sets us into the queen of wands energy. We're going to be really attracted to people and situations and ideas that are highly creative. Highly creative energy is going to be like catnip to us during this time. And it moves us here to the queen of wands, fire and passion and beauty and brilliance. It's also fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So if you have fire sign energy in your chart, Gemini, it's going to come out really powerfully. And it's embracing that fire. It's embracing that tenacity. And it's letting yourself shine forward. It's embracing your magic too. You don't have to understand how and why and know all the corners of everything. Though as a Gemini, that's what we like. You know, especially if we have Sagittarius energy in our chart. Oh my gosh. No, we love to know the hows and how comes. And we can spend our whole life researching and, and thinking and learning until we're experts or until we have experts surpass. And then we'll still think we don't know enough. So just be aware of that. Just be mindful here. Embracing your fire, embracing your, your passion and creating with it. But with the Knight of Swords, we do have this energy during this time that kind of breaks things. It's like just wanting to charge forward and then we'll just charge forward, not really knowing, not really sure, but just knowing that I have to act, right? The wind, it has to blow, it has to blow. And it, it, it makes this tornado you know, of doom right, that is around us. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is too much. So be mindful about this. It can increase our tension, our doubts, our fears, and it brings stress. So when we see this come in and it will, it'll be like, oh my gosh, I need to get this done. I need to get that done. It's going to be this high level of, of stress, but also the sense of like this to-do list that will never end. So acknowledging that and releasing that is going to be so important or acknowledging that part of our personality when it starts, starts to show its ugly head, it's like, mm -mm, no, you don't get to. You don't get to come forward, but I get to embrace my passion and I'm going to take it slow this week. I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to move forward slowly and carefully and compassionately within myself and I'm opening up my world. Now, it moves us then to our spirit message, angels and spirit guides, show them clearly, guide this reading. Ooh, so you have the osprey, oh, and the canary coming forward. The canary has been coming forward a lot during this week. So the osprey says, your success is now at hand. Allow the abundance to flow to you effortlessly. And the canary says, step, step forward now and sing your song. There is power in finding your voice. And this is what this reading is all about. It is about embracing your voice, embracing your success, allowing, allowing yourself to move forward in the effortless grace that is you without trying to be like everybody else tells us, oh, you should be like this, you should be like that. It's like, no, I should be me. So let's see what our chakra energy is, angels and spirit guides. Ooh, <laughs> so relationship, that's what came forward, you know, here. It's so interesting. The cards were talking about relationship and love and opening up of the heart. And here, this is the sacral chakra. It's the relationship we have with ourselves. It's the relationship we have with others that's coming forward. And we can really have the most beautiful relationships 
during this week. It moves us then to our energy to be mindful of angels. Ooh, my forehead itches. Okay, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. So we have the emperor and we have the king of cups. This is the, the tyrant coming through, right? You have to do it just like this. You have to do it just like that. We can also find ourselves out of alignment with a soulmate during this time. So just be aware that they're going to come through with overly like authoritative, aggressive energy. And we're going to come through with an energy that, that can be like, I, I just have to do everything for everyone, like this sacrificing of the self in order for everybody else to be happy. So just be mindful about that because this pairing during this time can just gobble us up. And with the King of Cups reverse, this is, you know, this is emotional manipulation and blackmail. So just being aware of those energies that come forward. And it can even be that our own inner psyche is going to be super harsh on ourselves. And that tyrant energy that could be, you know, the, it's going to be a strong masculine figure either in the now or in the past that can come forward in our head and and just be dominating our mental sphere or an energy that comes forward very masculinely so let's see what spirit has to say through our subconscious and this is the raven reverse and it says the universe is calling you to notice important synchronicities and this being reversed is saying hey listen look at the synchronicities that are happening here look at the power that is leading you forward but we can be so caught up in our own thoughts and our own you know idea of how we should be moving forward that we miss these so just be mindful about that it moves us then to our chakra energy which is the i am presence this is one of my absolute favorite cards it is reversed so there's a blockage in the crown chakra tapping the top of the head is very good for energy flow right but it also is going to you know release any blockages in the crown chakra and letting yourself say i am i am successful i am powerful i am enough i am successful i am powerful i am enough and listen to all the i am statements that want to counteract that i'm lazy i am good for nothing i am not doing what i'm supposed to be doing you know type of thing and that you need to see that and say no you are being those thoughts are being a tyrant in our own existence and we need to look at them you know understand that they're coming from a place of hurt inside of us and then i want to say release them yes but acknowledge them and then not be owned by them it's going to be super important it moves us then to our energy to be mindful of it's the ten of wands just like we were mindful of in this reading that we are carrying a tremendous burden during this time and it can absolutely overwhelm us it's like trying to do too much it moves us then to our subconscious tarot message and that is the seven of cups and the seven of cups is remembering our dreams connecting with our dreams and seeing ourselves move forward in the power of our dreams all right gemini i hope this reading has resonated with you i wish you nothing but light love peace and happiness may harmony always be with you i am sending loving healing energy to each and every one of you so let's end this reading with a meditation a clearing away of negative energy a raising of a positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Gemini. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.